Right. And I think these are two items that you may want to consider pretty important. I think that this is a Lucy light you can get on Amazon. Uh, and I'm seeing them in more and more retail stores. Uh, a solar panel and uh, inside are, does this, power, does this got uh, juice in it? Where is the, this is an older one. Where is the button on this one? There, it came on. Well, you can't really see because it's light, but uh, this, and this will run it most of the night, won't it? You, this, you put this out in the, during the day, it'll probably run most of the night. And it's, Lucy lights are really good. Uh, it's also, oh, there's, there it is up on high. And uh, off and flashing and off. And it's, uh, I'm gonna deflate it. And it deflates, packs down to nothing. So in a, in a space where you have to have all the room you can get, this is the minimum amount of space. Oh, and I turned it on. I think that's really good. And do you put it in your, like, on your dashboard or something during the day? Right. To you put it on it? your dashboard, don't you? Yep. It's just a solar light, so you don't have to replace batteries all the time. And I am just a huge fan of headlamps. Uh, I, I would recommend everybody have a headlamp uh, to go on your hands and your head free. You go to go outside in the, in the middle of the night for an emergency run to the nearest bush, got a headlamp. Uh, you can read by them and your hands free. You can hold your book while, and they angle. I don't know if you can see that. They can okay. angle uh, and they have, I don't know how much you're gonna be able to see this. This, per, this is Energizer and I'm very big fan of the Energizer brand. This is probably be 15 or $20. It's got a super bright central light which will you walk at night, you can see, period. Then it will have a red light, like Sue Ann mentioned. At night, you use the red light, people won't see it, it won't blind you, and then it has a low beam. Um, so I am a big, big fan of Energizer lights, of Energizer headlamps, and I recommend them. Okay, and your entertainment system. It is, folks. <laughs> I do an awful lot on this when I'm on the road. It is low power consuming. So um, even things like writing emails. Uh, I wrote Bob an email this morning and did it on this. Um, anything except if I'm going to write a long, long piece of text uh, or edit pictures, I will do on my phone. And we might add that with uh, Bluetooth accessories, Yes. They be, that really expands their usefulness. Mm -hmm. uh, a keyboard, a Bluetooth keyboard, a Bluetooth uh, uh, speakers, and, mm -hmm. and it really enhances. And uh, you can probably, most newer phones, you could connect to a bigger screen, although most of us aren't going to be carrying bigger screens, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, at any rate, they're remarkably useful. Uh, download watching TV. Uh, videos. I watch TV on that all the time. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. If you're holding it right here, you don't need it any bigger. No. Right. And uh, a big one to me is books, reading mm -hmm. books. Mm -hmm. um, take no space. You can get the Kindle app, the Nook app, lots of apps, uh, right. and read your books right there. Um, and of course, Kindle has a million free or really cheap books. And all the mapping apps for travel are great. Yeah, just it can really honestly be your travel, your very low. Uh, power use uh, entertainment center. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll uh, recommend that, especially on the west side of the country, that the Verizon network has the best coverage that I've experienced. Yes, Which by far. Uh, and here we have a inverter. You plug this into your, uh, it's just a standard cigarette lighter plug. Your car almost certainly has a standard socket to put a cigarette lighter plug in, power port. And then it has uh, a USB, so you could charge your phone off of this, although better to charge it directly. Uh, and it has a standard 110 uh, plug. So you could uh, take a crock pot, and if you're driving all day across country, you could take your crock pot, a very small one, they make quart sized crock right, pots. A low power one. Or a rice cooker. Mm. No, wouldn't run a rice cooker. No, no. This is too small. Uh -huh. But you could get a 400 water wood. You, you could, yeah. I think if you went like to truck stops and got things that truckers use. The 12 volt ones, right. especially. Right. They would be a better choice right. at any rate uh, because much more efficient. At any rate, you can power 110 items, low volt, low drop 110 items with this while you drive. Very, very handy. Uh, 
or your laptop. If your laptop runs on 12 volt or uh, runs on 110 and you can't find an adapter, try to find an adapter for your laptop if you have a laptop or your tablet, whatever. And if it requires 110, then you can you can charge your laptop with this while you drive. There you go. Okay, so next we come to the bathroom, the thing everyone is going to ask us about. How do you go to the bathroom when you live in a car? And uh, we're not shy. <laughs> or, you're not shy. I'm just asking the questions. So you're the one who has to be not shy. Uh, and you're going to answer the questions. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. If uh, this is not your thing, please pass forward. <laughs> so um, living on the road, I, I'm just going to use the words pee and poop. Uh, you can't say that. No, no. no. This is polite company. <laughs> uh, if at all possible, keep them separate. So um, I will talk about peeing. I pee. This is how I do it. I pee in this. Has just just a regular yogurt container, and then uh, once I do that, I just pour it in this for storage. And then once this gets a half full or so, I uh, go water a tree. Lucky tree. <laughs> Lucky tree. Yeah. They do. It's good for them. Yeah, yeah. So um, this is what is this? Two gallons? Two and a half? gallons two gallons this is a two gallon bucket it actually came from a local grocery store it had uh, cake icing in it uh, originally and I line it with a uh, item called a double duty bag uh, I'm sure it's pun in intended uh, and it is specifically made for human waste and it is a double bag I'll show you the outside bag is a really heavy plastic and the inside bag is a like a heavy black garbage bag. So what I do, oh these and these are very expensive. So I try to be frugal. Some might say cheap, but I call it frugal. Is I then line the black bag with a, a doubled uh, grocery bag and put it in here. Now at the bottom of the black bag okay. is, oh. Show them that. Okay. At the bottom of the black bag is this silicon stuff that when it gets um, moist, it gels up. So, um, and the reason I like to uh, have that as a backup is because sometimes my poop is running. <laughs> And it might go through. You can't say that. <laughs> might go through the garbage <laughs> bags. So if that happens, uh, I want to have this double duty bag as my backup. Typically, however, that is not the case. So what happens is once the deed is done, I just wad it up in this, and then put it in one of these. This is just a Ziploc the cheap old Ziploc bag. And then, because I'm usually out uh, in uh, camping for days at a time, uh, they collect and they smell. So I found that plastic doesn't do it. The smell permeates the plastic. So I bought one of these, again, a thrift store find. It's just a canister, kitchen canister. It's, I believe it's stainless steel. And then I take this and I put it in here. So does it screw off? It's actually... I've never seen one quite like no, that. No, I haven't either. I'm not going to open it because... Oh, it's... Uh, okay. It's being used. Oh, it just popped yeah, pops off. Yeah, it just off. pops off. Yeah. Uh, we should say that on our forum uh, that someone just commented that they use a glass, tall glass jar. Uh, right. A, um, like a mason jar that has the lid that you can latch tight. It has a seal around mm -hmm. it, like a gasket. Um, I'm, I would, I would be cautious using glass right, because, uh, because of bumpy roads and things, you know, knock up against something hard. Um, it's one thing I wouldn't want to have in my vehicle. So, whoops, this all goes together in my car, like this. Oh, and, oh, and oh I should say, yeah, let's. Can I just back up here? And sure. So, if it, when everything's there, this is a um, luggable loo lid that's actually kind of broken right now. How long have you had that one? 
10 years. <laughs> there's, there's no secrets here, Sue Ann, you know that. <laughs> and uh, it fits best on a five gallon bucket, but it does fit for the last eight years on this two gallon bucket. And it's worked great for me. And you, in a car, you, I have no place to put a five gallon bucket, only, only the two gallon bucket. Right. And yet this is plenty sturdy. Uh, plenty, obviously, yeah. yeah. The same bucket. Um, and this goes, uh, you know, that hump that is between the two passenger seats in the back, this goes on top of that hump. And then this goes, is flat enough where it just goes under my mattress. So storage is really easy. And then when this is stored on that hump between the, the uh, seats, this is what goes in this. And this, when it's being used, goes outside. It doesn't get stored in my car. For repair reasons. Uh -huh. And then I put this towel out just to let folks know that I typically, I always uh, cover the seat when I'm doing uh, bathroom stuff, just uh, as a caution. Right, okay. okay. And you, you actually use the restroom inside the vehicle. I do. It, bad weather, people around, you just have to be able to. Right, right. If I'm, if I'm in town uh, and I have the choice to use a public restroom or my car, I use a public restroom for sure. But if I don't have that choice, then I, you know, I use the car. I have been in situations where there haven't been any campers around and the brush has been high enough where I'll just go outside. You know, and and that works fine too. Okay, so here this is uh, your Toilet. bathroom. This is going to be the uh, bathroom, I guess. Right. Continuing right. on the bathroom thing. Right. Toiletries. So um, between trips to town, which can be as long as ten days, fourteen, uh, two weeks, uh, I take sponge baths, and I uh, use basically a, a washcloth to do that, and you know, before I get into bed at night. Um, I use, this is water, water for my face. So basically I'm taking a clean washcloth, doing my face. Then this is um, rubbing alcohol. And I use this for the stinky places. <laughs> so under my arms and anything like that. And, uh, and just work my, my way down my body to my feet. And the rubbing alcohol isn't, uh, that's a new one to me. Yeah. And it isn't abrasive it or? It isn't, ha hasn't been. I've tried different things. I've really, um, witch hazel, uh, diluted rubbing alcohol, combination with rich witch hazel, witch hazel and alcohol, vinegar. But this is, seems to be best for me. And it's just pure? You're just using I think it's 70%. 70%. Yeah. So, and um, this is the bag. I use to put my uh, toiletries in, so my brush and my deodorant and uh, my vitamins are in here. Anything that I'm going to kind of use on a daily basis is in here. And uh, that's probably a, a thrift store bag. It is, exactly. You can find these at thrift stores a dime a dozen. Exactly. And um, you'll notice, with, maybe with the, the exception of the bucket and the case for the um, stove, is everything is soft-sided. Soft and that's done purposely. I have tried hard-sided containers, but when you're in a car, every square inch counts. And you can make a soft-sided container really fit in those kind of odd spaces where uh, a hard-sided container like a drawer will not fit. Right. And we're gonna now, we'll talk about your clothes, okay. uh, and then it becomes really apparent yes. why that's important. Right. So, if I could have you hold that for a minute. Okay. So this is um, uh, one of my clothes bags. I have uh, one this size, and this is just a duffel bag, and another about half the size that I typically put underwear in. And I pack enough clothes for um, ten, 10 days to two weeks again. Um, and uh, what happens is when I wash my clothes and fill this up, it is like hard to zip because it's so full. But after uh, you know days in the back uh, back country, it starts getting smaller. But my dirty clothes bag starts getting bigger. So what happens is basically is a zero gain of, of space being taken up. So it just collapses and expands right. as you Ex need it to. Exactly. So you, it, absolute best use of space. Also, especially the dirty clothes bag can just stuff in any corner. Exactly. Uh, and stuffing them in, 
in odd little spaces, which cars have an abundance of odd little spaces, is really a critical right. element too. Right. So again, um, just like we talked about the bedding, the materials that you choose for your bedding, uh, for your, uh, if you're in cold weather, you wanna also think about that in terms of the materials that you choose for your clothes. So, um, you know, if it's gonna be cold, try to stick, stay away from cotton. Uh, and if it's, it's gonna start cold and get warmer, do layers, you know, a t-shirt, a shirt, a fleece, and then uh, a really heavy coat. And on this particular trip, I've used everything right. at the same time it's because it got cool. cold. Yeah, it's yeah. been quite cool. Uh, I do the same thing. I'm doing the exact same thing right now, which is what mm -hmm. I got up and did this morning. Mm -hmm. I've got a, a t-shirt and then a, uh, a flannel and then uh, a coat pullover. And earlier I had on my heavy coat, uh, which I took it off for this video, mm -hmm. but uh, normally I'd be have a heavier coat. Right. Because so layers, layers are critical in ever in both in the yeah. in sleeping and in dressing. Right. Really critically important. Um, the other uh, hand I'll give you when you're sleeping in cold weather is to wear something on your head because it keeps you so much more warm. You know, I I have a hoodie that I wear. I've used a stocking cap, which kept falling off. That's why I don't use it anymore. But I know people that use a stocking cap. Right. With a hoodie, you put it up at night and draw string it in uh -huh. and tie it off, mm -hmm. and it's not coming off. There's almost nothing better to sleep in than a hoodie, just for this reason. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, a lot of stuff, but it will fit in most cars. Yes. And it will make you, give you a pretty reasonably comfortable life. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say. The way I, I thought about it when I um, started this lifestyle or preparing for the lifestyle is that if I were a backpacker, that would be like the minimal amount I would need. So anything above that to me is, is really just that, a step above and uh, makes it more than just surviving, but actually thriving. Right, absolutely. And if, if you get a chance, to move up from a car to a minivan even, or, or even an SUV, would, mm -hmm. for most people would nice. give them more room, mm -hmm. or uh, all the way up to a full-sized van, uh, then you can take these ideas and take them to the next level. So you'd have a laptop instead of just a phone or right. a five gallon bucket instead of a, a one and a half or two. Right. And so everything would be just a little more and a little better. Mm -hmm. But this is still the basics that would be the foundation of your life in a car, a van, or even an SUV. And even an RV. If you, have, if you have an RV you're moving into, then of course you have much, much more room with almost every RV mm -hmm. and more storage. But it was still, these essentials are still there. And these right. are basic ideas that you can always apply to your life. So one more thing before we're done, we wanna talk about what I think is probably the most important thing, and that's privacy. Uh, you have to have privacy. Sometimes you're going to be in the city. People will be wandering around. Mm -hmm. And even if you come to the RTR or other gathering, mm -hmm. people are going to be walking by and looking inside and you're going to be in there, whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing. Right, right. And you don't want people looking in on you. And so you got to have some privacy. Now, what most people do is Reflectix. This is Reflectix. It's an aluminum, uh, aluminum foil, really heavy aluminum foil on the outside. And on the inside, it has some bubble wrap. I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, it works really, really well. Um, you would, most people will just cut it to fit the window, little, cut it a little large, and then push it inside and kind of push it up and in the gaps around the window. And it'll just stay. Uh, you, some people will put, uh, 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 magnets or um, Velcro on it. This has Velcro on it. Looks like you guys have Velcroed it. And uh, but most people find you can just compression fit it into windows. It's got several big advantages. The first is in the winter it'll keep some cold heat in, and in the heat in the summer it'll keep the heat out. It is especially good at keeping heat out. It's exceptionally good at that. Um, so those are its big advantages, heat and cold, uh, no light passes through, but it also has some disadvantages and that's why you don't use it anymore. Mm -hmm. What are the disadvantages? Well, when, um, when I started out in 2010, I, I brought Reflectix with me 
and um, uh, did the pressure compression fit like you're talking about. The reason uh, I don't like it is because of the space that it takes up. By the time, because the Prius has lots of windows, by the time you have all of those rolled up in a, in a bag, it just takes up a lot of room. It's not heavy, but it still takes up a lot of room. And so I decided to go with uh, curtains, not so conventional curtains, but curtains all the same. And you were also mentioning that you pass through cities a lot right. and are in cities, and the stealth was a big deal. Right, so um, unless you paint it or line it with black fabric of, of some sort, uh, people are gonna see that you have uh, the reflectics up on your window. Right, and so some people will do that. They will take the same uh, mm -hmm. uh, felt, what, is, uh, what am I saying, fleece? Fleece. Oh, same yes, fleece, mm -hmm. uh, spray glue, and then glue that on it, mm -hmm. and so that from the outside you don't see it. Uh, or they will actually buy a can of dollar spray paint and spray paint it black. Uh, but it does take up more room. It just, it really does. It, you roll this or fold it and that's pretty big multiplied towards the entire car. And it becomes an issue. And even laying flat, uh, putting it under your mattress, say for example, yeah, it, it still takes up a lot of room. Uh, and so what are you doing instead? Okay, so um, what I decided to do is use matte black material. And the reason I chose matte black is because being matte is not shining. If somebody car would go by, uh, it would, would not reflect the light. So there's a, a stealth factor there. I chose polyester fleece because you don't have to hem it. You cut it and uh, it requires no sewing. What I did is I mounted four S-hooks, and I don't know if you can see it, but this is the four S-hooks. Uh, two at the front holders where you have a handle here, and then two at the struts uh, with the uh, hatchback. And then I strung a pretty thin uh, bungee cord material here. The thing that holds the curtains up so this is like one of my curtains, is I took grommets and, and uh, made a place for those S-hooks to go. And the S-hooks, uh, one goes here, one goes back at the strut, and then it will cover the whole window. The reason the bungee cord material is there is if I want to, I can clip, so it would be kind of like this, but once the, the um, if I want it all the way up to the top, I just clip it with one of those uh, clips that I showed you earlier. So th there wouldn't be a gap where it falls and, and hangs, which is Correct. what it tends to do. Correct. Um, sometimes I want the gap because I want that hot air to escape out, out the window where I have a little opening there. And sometimes I want the complete privacy. Um, the way the um, material is cut is uh, this big piece of polyester here, polyester fleece covers behind the front seats and then all the way back to the struts. And then this piece here goes from that handle on the other side to the other strut. And then I have another piece that will go in the back. The back, hatchback uh -huh. window. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't cover the whole set of windows, but really from here to the struts and then front and back. And your, your windows are really dark anyway. I did have them tinted for this, right? Whatever. And put these, these on. So that you can have the window down and not rain, not getting in, and people can't see exactly. it. Exactly. Right, very, exactly. very good. And so between the black, flat black material and the tinting, mm -hmm. you're, you're good. Right. So tinting would, would be something we would recommend if anyone that can afford it. If you can afford it, yes. And, and get the darkest that is legal in your state. Mm -hmm. And it's, it varies by state, so you're going to have to do your own research on that. Mm -hmm. And so you've done good. I mean, if you're in the city, you and I, I have been with you camping in campgrounds. Uh, we were in Monument Valley. Let's just tell the story real okay. quick. Uh, why don't you tell the story? No, no, no you go ahead. Uh, we were in Monument Valley because it's Navajo land, and mm -hmm. to, to be in the, you got to be on Navajo land to be in their campground. And we were gorgeous area. Gorgeous. What if you never, if you go nowhere else on the planet? <laughs> go to Navajo Valley, or Monument Valley. Valley. Well, they had a parking lot 
and you parked and then you took your tent down and set it up. Mm -hmm. Of course, we just, I slept in my van and you slept in your car. Right. And so all day people were walking by your car and you were in there mm -hmm. all day. Mm -hmm. And at night you were in there right. with your lights on right. and watching your phone. Right. And uh, no one ever knew. No. Nope. Superb stealth. So that's, uh, I can highly recommend Sue Ann's method of stealth <laughs> as being super good. Uh, and so th that will work for you. The tinting is really important, whether you use, uh, whether you use uh, Reflectix and black out the one side, or uh, now what you can do, see, if you spitz this window, then this would be silver and this side would be black. And then at night, you would reverse them. So that one would come here, this one would go there, and then the black would be on the outside. And that's how you would work it. But again, you do have the problem of the extra size right. inside the van, inside the Viet car, which you have to fit to face. In a van, it's not such a big deal. In a car, it becomes a pretty big right. deal. Unless you have windows in your van. Right. Well, I don't. I think you have more storage, so you can throw them height. You can store sure. them. The sure. storage is oh, a big oh, problem. Oh yes, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, you have so much more room for storage. Okay. Well, thank you, Sue Ann. Thank you, um, you really are the pro. You've done this and you've got <laughs> it all figured out. Thank you. Thank you. So folks, thank you for watching this video and we'll ask you again to subscribe to the channel and like us on YouTube and uh, tell all your friends if you've learned anything and we'll talk to you later.